That's a dick. Normally, I don't tackle a film's sequel this quickly, but after the nightmarish way the first film ended, I was kind of curious to see where Angela's story went from there. What are you looking for? A gun? No? A drill. Oh, okay. So it's a comedy now. Sleepaway Camp 2 is actually made by a different writer and director, as you can see with this credit, based on an idea by Robert Hiltzik. Sure, in that both films feature campers, the woods, and a killer. I don't see Don't Go in the Woods saying based on an idea by every slasher filmmaker ever. And in case you forgot that a movie called Sleepaway Camp 2 is the sequel to something, they'll sum up the first one for you. There used to be this camp about 60 miles from here. All these kids started getting killed. Well, it ended up that the killer was the shy 14-year-old girl that everybody picked on. Except this girl, she wasn't a girl. Evie, let's go. She was really a he. And there you have Sleepaway Camp in five seconds. And it's still better than Sleepaway Camp 2. And soon enough, in the film's opening scene, Angela turns up. Where the hell are you? Right here. <clears throat> Gee, I wonder who the killer is. None of the campers seem to like Angela because, well, she's fucking annoying. Camp Rolling Hills is the best! <laughs> I just don't understand how you go from this... What's the matter? Are you afraid? Huh? ...to this. Maybe next time she could actually play that guitar. Hopefully we can see a little chemistry between the actors before they all die. You know, the newspapers say I'm the best soccer player Lions Township's had in the past seven years. Yes, I can tell by the way you're handling that obvious soccer ball. Well, sure enough, a couple of the campers get plenty wasted on chugging their root beer a little too fast. And it must have a huge effect because she's not having any kind of reaction to sitting on this hot grill. Say no to drugs. <laughs> I'm not laughing at that line. It's just that the match went out right after she threw it. She may be a little obnoxious, but at least she's subtle. Dead teenagers' brains. What's really in there? Dead teenagers' brains. Maybe she can amp it up by taking the brains of the 12-year-olds. They should be sent home. Charlie and Emilio have been coming here for years. I'm sorry, their names are what? Charlie and Emilio have been coming here for years. Weird coincidence. Wait, what were the other characters' names again? Oh, don't worry about Allie. So are Molly. My name is not Mary, it's Mare. Want to help Rob? Have either of you guys seen Judd or Anthony? This movie's the worst thing to happen to the Brat Pack next to the 90s. They even got Renee Estevez to play one of the leads. And Angela? That's Bruce Springsteen's sister, Pamela. Now this will give Angela one hell of a nightmare. Sleepaway Camp 2, reminding you of better horror films years before Scream did. There's even one guy who tries dressing up like Jason. At least now that eye-catching box cover makes sense. Hobo Leatherface also makes a cameo in the thing. Please, no! Sorry. Once I start a task, I always finish. Why is this door locked? Because it's a fucking bathroom! We obviously know the slutty one is gonna die. The movie does have the common courtesy, though, to kill her after she's done fucking a log. Then again, they do toss her into a pool of other logs. I don't care what any of you say, she's never looked hotter. Demi starts running her mouth that the campers that Angela supposedly sent home never actually made it home. <laughs> there! 
Now no one will ever know that those campers were never sent home. Angela's a little upset because she was just fired for, well, sending all of those other kids home. I even called the police. I was afraid they were dead. Molly and Sean, meanwhile, occupy themselves by investigating whatever keeps them busy in the third act. They find Angela at her happy place, but unfortunately, they've entered the truth zone. He reminds me of this boy that I knew when I was about your age. He didn't like me very much either. I drowned him. Now tell them about the time you fucked a girl to death with a curling iron. <laughs> That's a great story. Hey, I wonder what's in here. Dude, why the fuck would you even think to go in there, except to conveniently find all of those dead bodies? Molly and Sean get held captive while Angela concocts a delicious dinner of battery acid. God damn it! Why is everyone instinctively going into that abandoned cabin? There's battery acid in it. <laughs> Most of the corpses look to be rotting rather quickly, except for this one that is still breathing. Molly escapes, but oh shit! Fucking tragedy as she plummets <laughs> only about two feet. With about five minutes left and several people still alive, let's wrap this up. <laughs> That was quite an elaborate trap for a character that I've never seen before. Luckily, Molly didn't sustain any permanent damage from her little trip. Given that the first film had that shocking twist at the end, I can only imagine what this one is gonna do to try to top that film's conclusion. Oh, shit, cut your hair! Well, in a way, this ending was scarier than the first. It sets itself up for a sequel. And did they make a sequel? Of course they fucking did! Apparently, as long as you just reference things from the original, you can do whatever the fuck you want with the tone of your sequel.